And I spent the summer running from processing the grief that I was feeling. Um, it was just too painful. And so I found myself at the beginning of this, uh, what I'm gonna call sequestering experience, <laughs> this quarantine. And I found myself really kind of like, like sad. Um, and I, I, I started to go through kind of this thought pattern that, wow, I'm right back in the same place, sequestered again, just like I was a year ago. And this doesn't feel good. And I can't leave this house. By the way, I'm surrounded by the same exact people I was with a year ago. And there's got to be purpose in this. There has to be something in this for me to grow, for me to learn, for me to process something. And I literally had a, um, what I would call a, a full week of having grief pop up that I had not processed. And I don't know, any, any of you who have lost a loved one, you'll know that um, when it's real painful, at first you just try to get away from it. At least that's what I did because it was so painful. And you know, we've been married 35 years. I was married to my best friend. I not only lost my wife, but I lost my best friend. And um, my whole life had a different reality and I really didn't want to accept that reality. Uh, because for me, it was so different from what I imagined my life was going to be. So uh, for those of you who know me, you know that I am a David Hawkins fan. In fact, when I used to do the State of the Company address at Family Reunion every year, um, as we got to be one of the largest real estate companies in the world, and then ultimately we're right at the largest, uh, I remember teaching using the map of consciousness. Uh, in those state of the company addresses. And I said, let's not go to pride. Let's go to courage. Let's go to a, an empowering spirit of driving harder, farther, going beyond where we are now. And um, I, I thought I was a little bit out on the edge talking about David Hawkins, because I know that not everybody agrees with that. And yet, he did this work called Power Versus Force, and in Power Versus Force, and Jeff, if you have a screen share that you can do uh, yep. for the map of consciousness for everybody to see, um, what, what Hawkins did was he took all the different levels of human expression, human emotion, and he gave them basically a pecking order. The highest, as you'll see in the purple at the top, is enlightenment. Uh, and it, it works down, enlightenment is the strongest level of energy that we can carry. It has a vibratory field, it has an attractor field that brings in outcomes that are synchronistic, uh, that are completely um, where you transcend any, uh, any level of humanness almost. Uh, and then at the lowest level, you can see in the red at the bottom is shame. So each of these energy levels has a, an internal process that creates a vibratory field. So you can see if you look at shame and you go all the way over to the right side of the chart, the process is elimination and destruction. And as you work up from shame, you go to guilt which is basically attacking yourself and your own thoughts. And that carries with it an energy process and vibratory field of destroying. Right. And, then, and then above that is apathy. So what happens is as you move up every level of the map of consciousness, the higher level of energy carries with it a more positive vibratory attractor field than the lower level of energy beneath it. So apathy is all about abdication and giving up. Grief is about despondence. And so what I had to do was I had to just acknowledge that I was feeling some grief and I had to allow it to pass through. I had to allow the uncomfortable feelings 
to occur inside of me to let go of those uncomfortable feelings and, and to say that that's not my intention. And I know that was never Cindy's intention for anything that she would want me to feel. And I had to process that a lot. And so as I'm doing that, I'm thinking about uh, all of us and what we're dealing with with this pandemic. And I realized that, you know, what could be inside of us right now is a lot of this next level above grief, which is fear. Um, I, there, there are just a lot of unknowns. There is a lot of uh, internal fear that I felt through this process. There's a lot of internal fear that others who have gone through this process have acknowledged to me. And um, I know that um, there's so much about the unknown that we're processing uh, that, 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 that it's just a natural response, a natural energetic response. So I want to read to you uh, what fear means. And again, you can see the process over on the right is withdrawal. Um, so what fear does is fear runs much of the world and it spurs restless activity. Okay, so hear what I'm saying, restless activity. Fear, fears become basic motivators in people's lives. Be careful that you're not motivated by fear. Let go of fear if you're in fear. Acknowledge it and let it go. The world looks hazardous and threatening, right? We're feeling that right now. Yes. The world does look hazardous and threatening. Insecurity results in manipulation, jealousy, totalitarian, totalitarianism, and inhibition. Uh, I don't know about you all, but when this first hit, I felt somewhat inhibited. Um, I've had to process some of the fear to get out of feeling inhibited. Yeah. So how do you get out of fear? Well, Hawkins would say you go up to desire. Okay? So desire is stronger than fear, but look at what the process of desire is. It's enslavement. It's addiction. So here's what desire is. At desire, there is a great deal of energy that is available, motivating a major portion of human activity, including the economy. Yeah. This, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can build this. This level is insatiable. It is an addiction. Money, prestige, or power runs the lives of the many finding value in things outside themselves. See, that's why this going into the wilderness is so important. We've got to go internally. We've got to find value in what's inside of us. And when we can find value in what's inside of us, that's where we get empowered to go express that internal genius. Yep. So if you want to get out of desire, guess what you do? You get angry. You get, you kind of get a little, a little pissed off. Yeah. Um, and, and I've got to tell you, I've had to process some anger. I don't know about y'all, but I've had to process my anger about this. I want to be with my friends. I want to hang out. I want human connection. Um, it, it's not been easy, right? So desire leads to frustration, which in turn leads to anger. It is the fulcrum by which the oppressed eventually catapult to freedom. These individuals are volatile, dangerous, irritable, and explosive. Hate fuels violence. So um, what I've had to do is I've had to acknowledge that I felt some fear. I want the world to be the way it used to be. And I have a little fear that it's never going to be quite the same. I'm a little angry about that. But then I realized that maybe I didn't, um, that, that this was important that I needed to process some stuff. And I needed to let go of some of these lower level emotions that I felt. And so what I've been trying to do, if you work up the map of consciousness, where I've been trying to stay is in neutrality, willingness, and acceptance. 
Now, why is that important? Well, one thing I've learned about neutrality is that neutrality is not apathy. Right. It's saying, hmm, this is neither good nor is it bad. I'm not going to put a label on it and I'm not going to get attached to it in any way. What I'm going to do is just stay neutral and do what I need to do. Um, I spent one of the great experiences that I had in 2017 was I got to hang out for the day one-on-one -on -one with Michael Singer. Michael Singer is the guy who wrote The Surrender Experiment and The Untethered Soul. And I went to his home in Florida and I spent a day with him. <clears throat> and Michael Singer um, told me to close my eyes and count to 10. And so I closed my eyes, go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, open my eyes. And he said, okay, so who counted to 10? <laughs> I said, well, well, I did. And he said, well, who saw you count to 10? And I said, I did. And he said, okay, well, so who are you really? And I'm sitting there stumped and he says, really who you are is you're the observer of your own experience. He said, so you want to be in alignment with, with God's intention for you? He said, get quiet, do what you know you need to do. Don't label it as good or bad. Don't avoid what you don't want to do. And if you'll do that, you will be in alignment with your purpose. And um, that's where neutrality has some real meaning and value to me because it allows me to get quiet and not label this. I have found so much good in this pandemic through that process. And again, I know I'm putting a positive label on it and that's not neutral. But for me, it has felt like it's in alignment with me and my purpose and my internal compass. And so I've worked very hard to stay neutral. Um, that reminds me kind of the story about the monk who uh, won the Mercedes. I don't know if y'all have heard this, but I'll, I'll mess the story up somehow because I'm going from total memory, but it, I'm gonna make the point. Uh, the monk wins a Mercedes and everybody in his village comes to him and they say, oh my gosh, you are so lucky. He says, maybe, maybe not. The next day, the monk is in a terrible car accident in his brand new Mercedes. He's in the hospital. And they say, oh my gosh, this is so awful. He says, maybe, maybe not. The next day, while he is in the hospital, his house burns down. And had he been, and it was the middle of the night, and had he been in his house, he would have surely died. And all the villagers came to him and they said, oh, this is so fortunate that you were in the hospital and not at home. He said, maybe, maybe not. That's what neutrality is. And I use that story a lot to guide me along the way. So um, I think what, what I'd, I'd like to say is that if there's something inside of you that you need to process, Go into the wilderness, use this experience as your opportunity to process what's going on internally and, and, and don't make yourself wrong. Just don't make yourself wrong. Just accept that that's what you need to process and keep moving forward. Um, you guys, I want you to know that this map of consciousness is available online. Uh, one of my very favorite books I've ever read is Letting Go. If you want to learn more about this, I would highly recommend you read the book Letting Go. But I want to go to kind of uh, the context of what leadership is. And leadership is first and foremost leading yourself effectively. You can't lead others effectively until you can lead yourself effectively. And they say the hardest person to lead is yourself. And I know you guys have heard this. And, and the reason is, is that we judge other people by their actions, and we judge ourselves by our intentions, okay? So when we're so forgiving with ourselves and so unforgiving with others, 
uh, it's easy to let ourselves off the hook in being a leader. Uh, what I would say is that now is a really good time to reread. If you haven't read it already, read it for the first time. John Maxwell's 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Yep. Uh, Failing Forward be a, would be another great book to read right now. Uh, anything by Brene Brown. I'm, I love Brene Brown so much, and I'm reading a lot of Brene Brown because I think we, we need to be a little vulnerable right now. But I'm going to use the 21 Laws of Leadership, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on three laws. And I'm going to be brief about the three laws. So uh, we can do a question and answer, or Jeff, we can do whatever you want afterwards. Uh, but, but I want you guys to know that the three laws that I've looked at that stand out for me are, number one, the law of the inner circle. Um, I would invite you guys to understand that uh, your inner circle uh, is really um, the, the, the best mirror of your own life that exists. Yep. Uh, if you want to have a mirror that uh, you feel better about, um, just improve your inner circle. Your income is the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. Um, you can, you know, you can pull them, you could ask them what they earn, you could divide that by five, and I would, I would imagine that that's about what you earn. If you want to improve your circumstances, improve your inner circle and tighten your inner circle. I think one of the things that this pandemic represents for me is an opportunity to refine. Yep. And, and I want you to just take that word refine, you know, refine our own inner circle in a way where I do think that there's certain things that need to be weeded out. Take a close inventory of your inner circle and don't be overly harsh on yourself or anyone else. This isn't about making anybody else wrong. This is about having the inner circle that most represents who you want to be in the internal genius that is inside of you. Um, the other uh, law that I keep looking at and thinking about is the law of victory. You know, we're going to be fine. We really are gonna be fine. The world is not gonna end. Some of us are, are, have been impacted more than others by this. I wanna say that my heart literally goes out to anybody who has dealt with the isolation and the loneliness and the complete lack of like uh, connection uh, that people dying need. Um, that, that for me has been almost overwhelmingly, uh, difficult to, to know that people have died alone in hospitals, uh, without their family, without their loved ones, uh, in a personal agony. Um, I'm not discounting those people on any level. Um, but what I am saying is that for those of us that have not been impacted, life must go on. I think that's a lot of what I've processed uh, in processing the loss of Cindy. Uh, life has to go on. We're gonna be okay. You have to believe in the future and you have to show your people that everything is going to be all right. Remem remember, people do what people see. This is the time for you to show your people as a leader that you have a positive vision of the future. Mm -hmm. And then the third law that I have looked at that, that, that really has um, really mattered to me, uh, and by the way, uh, that, that I covered the law of the picture when I was meaning to cover the law of victory. So forgive me for uh, kind of, so the three laws are law of the inner circle, law of the picture and law of victory. Picture is people do what people see, give them a positive vision of the future. And then law of victory is 
find a way for your followers to win. Find a way for them to win. Um, I think that's where Jeff started this call is in um, saying that the, the owners of the Asheville, Asheville Market Center are generous people who care so much about you all. And they, they want to, they want to find a way for you guys to win. And I see Sherry nodding her head. I know Steve's down there going, oh, yeah, brother. <laughs> and I know Jim's doing the same thing. And I know Jeff's doing the same thing. You work with a great team. Um, keep your faith in this team. Keep your faith in Keller Williams and know that you're with a great company. And we're going to get through this together. And the last thing I would say to you is help one another. Because as you help one another, you're helping yourself and keep filling each other's buckets. Keep being there for one another and know that this too shall pass. <laughs> yeah. That was something my dad, my dad had two sayings that I loved. He'd say, Mark, we'll muddle through somehow. <laughs> we'll muddle through this somehow. And uh, then when he'd really get upset, he'd say, this too shall pass. And I keep telling myself, this too shall pass pass hang in there uh and remember that this is a great time for self-leadership and this is a great time for refinement and this is a great time to go into your own wilderness where you adapt to circumstances that are outside of your control and you nurture the inner genius that's inside of you and i see julie saying what you focus on expands keep focusing on that which fills you up and feels good so you guys um i told jeff i would try to finish speaking in 30 minutes that's often a challenge for me i think i actually did accomplish it in like 29 or 28 minutes and i'm real proud of myself on that and uh, jeff from this point forward this is your meeting you drive it you tell me what i can do to help you so uh, first of all thank you for sharing that um i i think that when you said psychic dynamite is not given it's earned yeah there's we often don't give ourselves permission to to go inward we spend all all our energy and efforts we focus outward because we feel that would be the most impactful for the people around us and, and i what I, what i hear there for me is that if by giving myself permission to focus inward that's where the brilliance and the, and the opportunity and that's where your highest level of impact is so that that it just really hit me and i i appreciate you sharing that with us yeah me too i i got the same thing out of it yep. and this is there, there's opportunity in this you guys you have to know that um this pandemic probably represents the single biggest opportunity that we will have in our lifetimes. Now, opportunity isn't a given, uh, or maybe opportunity is a given, but whether or not you are able to take advantage of that opportunity, to seize that opportunity, is definitely not a given. Uh, you have to choose to make the most of this and to find the most of it. And I think that really where you'll find it is, is in the wilderness. As you get quiet and you go and you nurture what's inside of you, because what this pandemic has done is that it's, it's caused a lot of us to understand that our external focus was, was, was never satisfying. Um, the internal focus is what's satisfying, nurturing our own inner genius. And, and I can tell you that, you know, it's kind of like uh, when this first showed up, I know y'all probably saw the meme that came out. I found out my three favorite hobbies are uh, going to restaurants, going to non-essential businesses and touching my face <laughs> uh, that you know that's that's just kind of um that's that's a lot of i think what what we were all doing and none of that is fully um satisfying it just it, long term you can't you can't satisfy that thirst that's amazing does does anybody else want to share takeaway or say anything You iced them, Mark. Ama amazing. 
obviously. Well, as as always, uh, Mark, you know, your strength and your your inner strength has always come through. And that's one reason that Keller Williams grew to the heights it's grown to. And I loved watching that power come on every every year and the things that you did. And but you did it you did it through people and yourself. And I really appreciate that. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Steve. I, I'm going to tell you, uh, I love Keller Williams. I will always love Keller Williams. And, and I've had a ton of opportunities outside Keller Williams in the real estate industry. And I've always said, I, no, Keller Williams is the only real estate company I could ever be a part of. Um, I, I love the leaders of Keller Williams. Um, there was, you know, there, there, there was probably a little wilderness that I had to go through there. And I think it, it was very helpful for me personally, and I'm grateful for that experience. Uh, but I'm more, just as grateful for all my years uh, working side by side with Gary Keller and Mo Anderson and, and uh, being a leader in the company. And who knows, uh, I, I sure have enjoyed um, hanging out with Keller Williams people on Zoom calls for the last few days and seems to just keep going and, and I, I'll keep serving. Yeah. All right. Uh, you guys want to, I don't know. I kind of feel like I need a cigarette after that. But uh, <laughs> we'll, as long as it's not Mark having a cigarette, that's cool. Totally. Nah, nah, I don't smoke. <laughs> that's all right. Oh, sorry. Not that Mark. Mark Boyd. We're still right. rooting for him. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, Mark. Uh, Thank you, Mark. Uh, we're, I'm going to jump into the team meeting part. And obviously, I'd love for you to have have you hang on if, if you're if you got to jump on something else that's that's great also but thank you for your vulnerability transparency and even it, it's interesting and you know john maxwell talks about leadership and it, it has nothing to do with the title and i consider you a dear friend and you'll always be a leader in these social circles so thank you for taking the time to share that my pleasure cool. my pleasure yay mark thank you thank you all all right. I'm going to myself. <laughs> okay, let's go into some team meeting. Hey, Jeff, I just sent you a text, but you're clearly ignoring me. Can you let Molly speak quickly about Bold? Because she's got to bounce, and I want to be yep. sure everybody hears what's happening in Bold. Yeah. And it's such an awesome segue. I mean, uh, so uh, everybody just heard that really, really powerful, powerful message from Mark. So. I think it's pretty important as we move up those stages of consciousness to pay really close attention to the purpose that you're bringing to that journey. And um, absolutely, Mark says, you know, go into that wilderness. Uh, as long as you come out of it by May 4th so that you can participate in Bold Pivot, uh, like Mark was saying, you know, opportunity is a given whether or not you choose it, seize it, find it, that's completely up to you. So many of you have said, okay, cool. Yeah, Bold Pivot sounds great, Molly. I just checked Asheville Market Center's numbers. There are three human beings. Well, three this morning, Jeff. Yeah. Um, three humans uh, who are signed up for this incredible opportunity. So real quick. This is gonna be a digital version of Bold 2.0. What's gonna be hugely different though, is it's a complete rewrite so that it's geared towards um, Gary Keller's four pivot points that he's helping us as we pivot through everything that's going on, seizing that opportunity. So it's gonna incorporate um, mindset, First and foremost, group exercises on what we cannot control and what we can control right now. It's all gonna have a service first, selling second approach. Um, there's gonna be command and database training um, scripts so that we can make sure that we're being we're coming from those, those areas of care um, and common sense like James has been talking about on the shift calls. Um, ex expanding, expanding on social media and our online influences. Um, he's going to talk, we're going to teach a lot about expenses, uh, the specific steps on how to cut your expenses anywhere from $300 to $600 a month or more so that you can begin to hold on to the money. For those of you who were in Gary's call yesterday, uh, the thought of selling a dollar for 70 cents now so that we can get $4.80 from it. Um, a year from now, that's huge. So he's going to talk a lot about that. And then the importance of doubling down on leads and understanding truly how to accomplish that. So 
when is it going to be? It's going to be Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's going to be the live stream portion. There are going to be eight bold coaches, two per week, who deliver this material um, from two to four on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, many of you have asked, so spo I'll go ahead and spoiler alert. I was um, fortunately chosen as one of the coaches to deliver your material. So you'll be um, with me the week of uh, Memorial Day week as we finish strong. It's going to be really exciting watching this happen and um, seeing what they're doing and what they're pouring into it. Gary's helping write it every single day. It's pretty awesome. So that's Tuesdays and Thursdays. On Wednesdays and Fridays, same time frame, two to four, um, is going to be a coach's corner. This is going to be an optional portion. Um, it'll be an optional call-in as just kind of extra. You're going to be able to talk specifically with head coaches within the system who are going to answer specific questions. And then probably one of the coolest parts to me that starts as soon as you sign up, literally as soon as you sign up for Bold Pivot, you get access to the Bold Pivot Facebook page. It's being monitored from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Monday through Saturday, and coaches on that are answering specific questions and doing all kinds of awesome stuff there. Don't worry, I'm going to get to the, the dates and all the things um, shortly. So who should, who's, who's involved in this? Literally everyone in the world. Portugal's involved, England's involved, um, the France, all over the United States, any agent period. It's open to all human beings on the planet. For those of you who are like, man, I sure do wish my husband, my wife, my partner, my spouse, my best friend, my mom, my dad, whoever, those of you who have come to me and been like, I wish they could hear this message. This is your opportunity. Um, of course, as you know, with Bold, it's going to focus, the majority of the focus will be on mindset. So um, it's going to be about making, um, understanding how to sharpen your skills to make more money, to be more effective, to take market share, to find like Mark was talking about, Opportunity is given, how will you seize it? So it's gonna start the first Tuesday in May. Again, two to four. Um, all you need to do is go to here, I'll put it in the chat thread. Boink. But bam, there's the link. Or just if you don't wanna copy and paste that whole thing, just go to mapscoaching.com. It's the first banner. Click on pivot, register. It's 99 bucks. Uh, we're thrilled to be able to bring it to you. Um, so there are three people signed up right now. There are 141 people on this call. Jeff, I expect 141 registrations by the end of the day. So get nine, in there, yeah, seize nine, this opportunity. 99 bucks. And I want the one comment I always hear about bold programs, and this is completely different and tailored to what we have going on right now. But the one thing I always hear is, I know it works, I just don't wanna do it. I want you to think 60, 90, 120 days from now and ask yourself, Will I look back on this and say, should have done that. Mm -hmm. I knew it would work, but I chose not to do it. We're talking about a hundred bucks for the whole class and you know it works. And this has been tailored to the situation. So I'll put a stamp on bold with that because we are behind. But um, yeah, let's do it. Do it. Do it. So just to answer that quick question, it is essentially every day in May. It starts May 4th. Um, and it's every, the program is every Tuesday and Thursday, um, and it ends the last Thursday in May. However, everything's available every day of the week except Sunday. You go to www.mapscoaching.com. Oh, sorry, Hannah. I think I may have sent that just to you. Thank you, Hannah, for sharing. Mapscoaching.com. Click on it. Pivot. Let's do this. Cool. Thank you, Molly. All right. Let's go to Afterburners. Uh, Kim Winters. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. Um, I think that was probably uh, one of the most uplifting Zoom calls I've been on. Uh, <laughs> yesterday, we got to hang out with John Maxwell at Movement. And we heard a lot of industry leaders. And one of the things that I took away was that um, distraction loses opportunity. Right. And it's really hard right now because there's so much information coming at all of us. Yeah. And there's a lot of distractions. So uh, my goal is to give you some insight so that you can weed through all the information that you keep seeing in the realm of mortgage and know that what's coming here is trying to bring you valuable content and things that are helpful. So let's just jump right into it. Market update, if you want to go to the next slide there. Um, rates are still very volatile. We are seeing a 30-year fixed vacillate between around 3.125 
all the way up to 3.625. So about a half point swing, depending on the day. I don't know where our rates went. <laughs> um, but it's 3.125 with no points for the 30 year, uh, two and a half for the 15 year, and the government rates are a little under 3%. So they're moving multiple times a day. So just, you know, what I would say is um, tell your folks to get locked in. If you want to slide on to the next um, slide, we have a couple of important market updates about um, things that are going on in the economy. We have a on OPEC agreed to cut oil production, which is keeping inflation low. That was, I mean, gas is super cheap, but we were really um, concerned about an oversupply. Tomorrow, this is very, very, um, going to be very telling. Thursday brings jobless claims numbers. So far in the last three weeks, we have about 17 million people out of work, which is just over 10% of the population. Um, experts are saying that we could see um, a 20% unemployment rate right now, which would be about um, 32 million folks out of work. The Great Depression as a comparison, and of course we would need to adjust for the population, was about 24 million people. Now, the difference now is that this is a, hopefully, as the economy starts to open back up, we'll see more and more people getting back to work. So we're hoping this is a blip. One thing that is happening and is real and will impact you is that lenders continue to tighten guidelines. I shared an article about Chase um, Bank. They have tightened their guidelines to require folks to have 20% down and a 700 credit score. So if any of you have lived through 2008, you saw the pendulum swing and it, you know, really far to the right and started to really be more difficult for folks to get financing. The difference between 2008 and right now is that we don't have an oversupply of inventory, so that's good news. Uh, hopefully you guys have been sharing content and we're putting out about forbearance and about the CARES Act. Guys, talk to your clients. If somebody does forbearance, they are not going to be eligible for a refinance until they've gotten out of forbearance and have made 12 on-time payments. So those are pretty critical things, and I don't think folks um, are really aware and clear on what the process is, but also what the unintended consequences are. So this is where you can really um, be a service and bring value to your clients by sharing this information. If you want to pop over to the next um, slide, we are starting to try to do things collaboratively. Um, there's another event that we're going to host next week, but this Friday I'm going to be hosting Tim Davis, who some of you've heard speak um, in person. He has um, updated his whole series and wanted to talk to you guys about how to build your brand during a pandemic. Um, there's a lot of things that, that we can be doing as we are not able to go full swing into, uh, even though we're essential and you guys can work now, you're having to connect with your audience in a different way because you can't see them face to face or, or a lot of times can't ride in the car with them. So what are some things you could do to help build your business? That's going to be Friday at 1030 AM. And then next week, I want you to mark your calendar. If you want to go to the next slide. We have a really cool new um, Agent Marketing Academy class that Tila and Chase are going to lead, and it's your next 90 days. How to pivot your business during this coronavirus and prepare for what's next. So that's going to be the 22nd at 2 p.m. I believe um, Alex is going to send out the Zoom link and, and so you guys can sign up, but make sure that if you don't have anything to do during that time or, or, the, or you're just hanging out, this is going to be valuable content. It's all, of course, free, and you'll be able to collaborate and um, hear from us. We're going to continue to do this every single week. We're going to have different events. Um, I didn't put it in here, but next week on Friday, I'm going to be hosting Beth Kramer, um, and we're going to talk about kind of how the coronavirus is impacting the real estate market from a legal perspective and how they're having to pivot. So that should be um, really cool. You can register for that on Eventbrite as well. That's all I have, guys. Thank you, Kim. Thanks. All right. What is this? The Corona update? Bic update. John. Bueller. Did John leave us? There we go. That's better. Oh, my uh, God. Great to see everybody. Um, really miss being in the office and, and seeing you face to face. I just have a couple things that are timely that I want to convey. Uh, we've had a lot of questions about the, the uh, changes in 
uh, real estate being labeled an, an essential business in, in uh, Buncombe County. Regardless of whether uh, you're in Buncombe County or Henderson or Haywood, we are asking that all agents comply with the COVID precautions, as well as using the uh, questionnaire, the COVID disclosure with all clients and vendors uh, to make sure that we are fully informing people so they can make an, an informed decision uh, on whether they wanna meet face-to-face -face or enter into a house, whether that's the seller or the buyer. So that's very important. Uh, the other question I've gotten quite a bit is, is the COVID uh, addendum required? And it is, in my opinion, a tool that we can use to protect our buyers. Uh, it is not something that we can force a seller to sign. Uh, so it's something I'm encouraging uh, that you use in your offer packets. And you know, I recently had a deal and they, they had no pushback and signed it. So you know, my clients earn this money's protected beyond the due diligence period. Um, so anyway, use that. The other thing I want to say is I really appreciate the people that have been attending the uh, broker labs and big Q&As. Uh, I'd like to see more of our provisional brokers on those meetings. We have at this point in time, I did a count yesterday, uh, approximately 60, uh, six zero uh, provisional brokers, and I'm seeing a very small fraction attend these meetings. Uh, I understand that it's challenging. Uh, and I'm not saying it just to keep an eye on you. It's really about helping facilitate connection during these times where we're separated. Uh, I think if you've got some feedback from the people that are attending the meetings, I think it's valuable uh, to have these discussions with each other and to support each other during this time. And like I've said at the end of every one of our meetings, we are not alone, we're just separated. Uh, and we can use these Zoom calls and Facebook, or FaceTimes and uh, texting and whatnot to, to to support each other and stay connected. And it's not just supporting uh, our agents. Uh, leadership really, I think, gains valuable uh, energy and connection uh, when we reach out to you guys and make that connection. So don't hesitate to shoot me a text. It's probably the easiest way to get a hold of me. Uh, but shoot me a text. Let's talk. Uh, we can do a FaceTime, jump on a Zoom meeting. Um, stay connected. This is absolutely going to pass. Uh, Mark mentioned that this too shall pass. That was my grandmother's favorite saying. Uh, my mom's favorite saying, more shall be revealed. So every day we learn more. Every day we move into a different stage of this, this corona uh, event. And, uh, you know, like we always talk about, what we do today is going to determine our business in 90 days. So uh, keep moving forward. Reach out for help if you need it. Uh, I've asked all the agents that I've spoken to to also keep an eye out for people that are struggling and either help them yourself or direct them to somebody in leadership so we can uh, reach out to them and give them the support they need. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to see you guys in the office again. Awesome. Thank you, John. Oh boy. Stuart says, I didn't even, this is like a sneak attack. Let me navigate this. Hold on. Stuart says, all right. So, uh, every, did everybody try some uh, campaigns? Anyone try some? Yes. Yes. Oh, good. Good. That's fantastic. Yes, I have as well. Yeah, there's a there's a couple incentives going around, um, both from KWRI and from the Market Center, to help you get into uh, being uh, familiar with using campaigns and getting those leads going for you. The people that are doing them are reporting that there are leads coming in at a much lower cost than. Um, other avenues so please lean into it in your um in command i believe it's in designs and bill you can jump in if you if you know the answer but there's a uh, there's now a banner or something that says that they you can get 25 dollars back from corporate if you spend is it you spend 75 you get 25 back if you've never run a campaign before so what they're trying to do is supplement things to, so you can actually get some leads going. It's just an effort from top down from corporate. If you need some help with that, please reach out to Danny and Jacob. Uh, remember that they're your resource. You can book them through email or email is probably best, but if you want to give them a call or shoot them a text, I'm sure they're happy to set that up as well. Make no mistake, we're in a shift. It's cause in. 
its cause in and of itself warrants caution. The health challenge that has shown up in our lives is very real. It must be respected and we must take all necessary actions to keep each other safe. GK. So, CARES Act, we know this. Do you, are you guys familiar with this? Speak up, are we are you over talking about this? Are you guys familiar with this? This has to do with the, the loan forbearance, uh, loan programs out there. Yes, feedback. Good talk. Keep going. Yes. Awkward. Okay. So, uh, this. Student loans, because I have two kids with student loans. The student loans are have with are no interest in some till September. Okay. That's awesome. So please, please explore this stuff. The, the most important. So Ken mentioned it, but just understand what you're doing, because a, a lot of this. It, there's like been this rush on oh, it's free money you got to take advantage of this it, a lot of it's in the details so don't just do this stuff make sure you're studying it and if, if you have questions reach out to people in your circle or here at Keller post it on our Facebook group have you done this do you know what it looks like there's a lot of good programs out there let's just make sure we understand them as we move forward and I think Ellen sent an email Jeff that said you know to make sure that you're if you are applying for unemployment assistance that you're doing it as a 1099 we are not employees of Keller Williams. That's right. Yeah. Yes. All right. How's the market? Zach, you around? Yes, I am. Cool. Welcome. Oh, my goodness. Look how professional he looks. Look all, all right. Yeah. So we got a, we, we've been working on the uh, Ruiz report, and we're going to continue to modify that uh, to bring you the most relevant information. One of, one of the things we can use is if we, if we have blind spots on that or if there's ways that we can improve it please share that with us. But Zach, we're running a little behind on time. So let's, let's do a quick overview on uh, what you got there and we'll go from there. Sure. Um, did you guys put in the week over week slides? Let's see. Yeah, I did. I think the, yep. Starting here. Okay. So um, Buncombe County as a whole for March is on Facebook and we're going to be adding Henderson County today. So if you want to review that on your own time, great. If you want some questions, just reach out to me to directly. But this is not on Facebook. So this is for Buncombe week over week activity. So at the bottom, you'll see it starts in the week of February 3rd. So it's the first week of February going until last week. So this is saying, you know, on the right, there's that. Despite uh, everything going on, overall market activity is, you know, slightly up, but it's basically flat. What's gone down is those homes under contract. And one thing to mention is that that's not exactly totally accurate. So even though under contract is going down, right, that's because some homes are closing. And then also it includes homes coming uh, off and temporarily off, withdrawns and expire, right? So if you go to the next slide, oh, but sorry, one, one good thing to point up if you go right back, sorry, uh. is that activity increased about 7% um, week over week. And so you're gonna see this trend going forward. So if you go to the next slide, listings. So as you see, listings were decreasing week over week starting March 9th when everything started hitting. And as of last week, there was a rebound, right? A rebound in listings. You'll also noting, notice that home closings are going down week over week. But again, that's a trailing, that's a trailing indicator from about 47 days ago, um, according to our data here, right? So, but if you look at the week of March 30th, we actually sold more homes than we put on. So inventory came down a little bit. But as you see, the trend is, that um, based on you know, stay-at-home orders and real estate not being an essential activity, right? as soon as it was made an activity, listings went up. So if you look at the second bullet point, this is at least suggesting that people were holding back due to the limitations of the industry and not entirely because of uncertainty. That is the suggestion. That's what, we'll see where that trend goes. And if you go to the next slide, right, off and temporarily off market, again, more suggestions that they might be ready to test the water. And if anything, it tells you that there is market resilience in the face of uncertainty in Buncombe. So you'll see starting again, when the stay at home order and everything started to reach, people made that decision to temporarily take their homes off the market and to withdraw completely. And as of last week, reduced tremendously, noticeable decrease in both of those numbers. So that's, that's the breakdown. Basically it's that, you know, there is resilience, people are ready to test the market and we'll see what happens going forward, but it's not doom and gloom. Yay, no doom and gloom. Was that, that was you? That's it? Good. All right. Uh, thanks, Zach. So uh, 
I've, the feedback I've gotten is we can use kind of even more dumbed down bullet points on that. And Zach, I think we can continue to hone that or maybe do a different version for clients and for agents. Um, but yeah, we'll circle back on that. And I appreciate everybody uh, that has been participating. We will probably, I'm recommending, I hope this is already on the docket, but we'll do another dive into the data that Zach will host. So if we, if we did a mastermind, we had not amazing attendance, but decent attendance, what I'd like to do is see more of you leaning into that. Uh, part of our GPS and advising our clients from a good fiduciary standpoint will be understanding the numbers and helping guide them through that. You have to be a market expert to be proactive. If not, you're just reactive. So please keep that in mind. Thank you, Zach. Yep. The, the only thing I would add to that is, again, using it as an incredible opportunity to reach out to people. It's not yep. salesy. It's not pushy. It's nothing. You're adding value and informing them about what's happening, whether they're a buyer or a seller. That's right. Cool. All right. Uh, KW Commercial. All right, party people. Uh, that was a very uplifting uh, a speech from Mark. So that was awesome. Uh, definitely uh, trust the force and uh, no go to the dark side during these times. There's, there's a lot of opportunity out there. Uh, so uh, just a quick update. Uh, we're trying to bring value from the commercial side to each team meeting. So this is one we threw together for evaluating residential rental properties. A lot of the same um, uh, formulas are used for uh, commercial, uh, but we're trying to keep it relevant to you guys here on this one. So can go on to the next slide, Jeff. You guys know a lot of these reasons right now, but why own rental properties? Um, nation, uh, national home ownership is dropping. Um, not good for us selling homes, but hey, we can sell investment properties, can't we? First time home buyers are waiting longer to purchase, uh, many into their 30s, and lots of other factors hint to more uh, renters on the horizon. Particularly, our area has a great uh, rental market, uh, short term and long term. Uh, short term's not doing so well right now, but uh, it'll come back. Uh, it's a passive income source. Cash flow is what you want to pay attention to. How much is the asset paying you every single month? Um, rental properties give greater security and less risk than the stock market. Um, a lot of people lost a lot of money in the stock market last month. And uh, if you own a house, can you go back and 30% of it just not be there anymore? No, the house is still there. It's still cash flowing um, if the renters are still there. So uh, greater security, less risk, less volatility than the stock market. It's also tangible. You can visit it. You can see it. You can use it. And generally, um, I believe this to be the case in Nashville, it's gonna appreciate over time. Renters pay down your mortgage principal. So say you're only making 300 bucks a month cash flow on the uh, property. If it pays down your mortgage an additional 600 per month, you're actually in theory making 900 per month. You just can't unlock that equity until you sell it or refinance it. Uh, rental properties give tax benefits. You can write off expenses, improvements, uh, depreciation. Uh, 1031 exchanges, you can um, uh, defer capital gains tax by purchasing another uh, income producing asset. Uh, you can leverage financing to purchase something three to five times higher than the value. A lot of lenders are requiring, uh, as Kim mentioned, 20, 25% down, uh, especially on investment properties. And say I want, uh, I got 100 grand down, I can buy something worth 500 and have somebody else pay down that, uh, that uh, equity over time. And when you sell it, you're realizing a whole lot more money that other people paid for. So good benefit there. Um, you can screen tenants. Um, I heard this um, last year, it was awesome. Uh, there's no such thing as a bad tenant, only a bad landlord. So screen your people, make sure you get the right people in there and you can uh, make your job a lot easier. So moving forward, uh, evaluating rental properties. Uh, we have uh, different ways you can look at uh, doing so, sorry. Uh, whether you're, you're evaluating a single unit, multi-unit, or short-term vacation rental, the property's investment potential needs to be evaluated before you buy it. You don't just buy it on a whim. So first of all, you take your gross income, you um, take out uh, vacancy, typically 5%, just because if you have to rent a unit, you're gonna have two or three months uh, that it's vacant uh, before you get a tenant in there. That gives your effective gross income. Add other income, do you have pet fees? Do they uh, reimburse you for utilities? Um, whatever it is, uh, add the additional income there. Your gross operating income, then take out all your expenses, your um, insurance, um, taxes, uh, maintenance of the property, HOA fees, whatever it would be. Um, those are all uh, grouped into expenses, and that gives your net operating income. And then afterward, uh, if you really want to dive deeper into cash on cash, we'll get into it here. Uh, you're borrowing money. You can uh, put your debt service in this calculation, and that'll give you your tax flow. So moving on, uh, three different ways we're going to cover here now. You see a cap rate used uh, most commonly. 
It's just the net operating income divided by the purchase price. So say, for example, we have a $300,000 uh, purchase price and a $22,000 net operating income. Simple division, 7.33% cap rate. Uh, the pros of the cap rate, you can use this for quick evaluations. If you're going through MLS and you have this info, um, you can do it quickly and it uh, makes the best investments for us to the surface. You can identify them faster. The cons, it doesn't account for debt service. You need an accurate NOI, net operating income, for reliable numbers. And uh, this measures a, a one-year historical basis only. It doesn't take uh, into account improvements or changes over time. And that's what you use an IRR for. We won't cover that here, but that uh, essentially gives a, a value to the, the time of money over, over time. Gross rent multiplier. Uh, this is simple. It's the purchase price uh, divided by the gross rental income. Say, for instance, we have a property worth 300 again and a $25,000 gross rental income this time. Uh, that gives a 12 uh, gross rent multiplier. Typically, the, or not typically, every time, the lower the GRM, the better. Uh, if you see it in the four to eight range, it's pretty good. Anything over 10, uh, try not to, uh, uh, try to prioritize other opportunities. Uh, again, this is uh, pros used for quick evaluations. It's simple. Um, and cons, this does not account for debt service, operating expenses. This is the least detail that you're gonna find. And this is a 1% rule. I know you guys have heard this before. Very difficult to find in our market. We'll cover that. But the 1% rule states that the gross monthly rent should be at least 1% of its final price. So if it's a $300,000 purchase price, you should get at least $3,000 per month in rent in theory. If you're able to do that, that'd be an excellent return in our market. Um, when we reference the property's price, we're referencing the purchase price plus repairs you have to make or improvements you have to make. So for instance, you buy a $100,000 house, you gotta put 75 grand into it. Uh, that price is effectively 175 that you're running your numbers off of. 1% rule, you can use it really quick to identify the best opportunities. And this is, again, cons only used for quick estimation to, to find the ones you want to investigate further. And this is really tough in our market. If you see something that uh, you can get 1% of the purchase price on and it's in good shape, uh, I would consider it very strongly. And then uh, this is the most detailed you're gonna find. Once you find one, two, three properties you really wanna investigate, you go into cash on cash return. So this is your cash flow um, divided by the total cash invested. So say for instance, you have a property worth 300,000, 22,000 net operating income and a debt service, you gotta pay your mortgage at 15,000 annually. You gotta put 25% uh, down, so that's 75 grand. And then you run that calculation, that gives a 9.33% cash on cash return. Um, this is the most detailed. It's really what you want to do when you're running your pro formas for uh, investments during due diligence or the ones you're making offers on. And you need accurate data. I've, I've heard it said in spreadsheets before, crap in, crap out. You need accurate data to get reliable pro formas here and make uh, solid investment decisions. So scrutinize your numbers and then make sure you're uh, uh, getting accurate readings and, and you can make informed investment decisions that way. So this is uh, next slide, a uh, pro forma from a 22 pad mobile home park we sold a few months ago, but uh, might be a little too blurry to see, but essentially we break down income per uh, pad, uh, whatever the pass through expenses are to the tenant. And then we have detailed notes for each uh, pad. That gives a total income. We take out the 5% vacancy, um, that we take out the expenses. So in this, we've got maintenance contingencies in case something goes wrong, we're planning for it property taxes, um, landscaping, lawn maintenance, natural gas and cable, insurance, water and sewer, electricity, um, whatever expenses are incurred on the property, you put those there, you get your net operating income. And then uh, you wanna factor in your debt service as well. And after you take out that debt service, you can see your cap rate. So in this case, it was 9.8% cap rate. And then the cash on cash return is actually 12.87%. The cap rate and the cash on cash don't uh, directly correspond. A lot of times uh, you'll get a higher cash on cash return if you uh, do the detailed calculation. So in summary, uh, use cap rate and gross rent multiplier to quickly assess properties. Use cash on cash projections when you're narrowing down the best options and that way you can make informed decisions. Very important, anything four units or more is considered commercial real estate brokerage. So if you have a 16 or 24 unit apartment building um, are you really doing your client the best service if you are not uh, an expert in that field? So at KW Commercial, we're here to help you succeed. We're here to help you get paid. And ultimately, it's the success of the client guided by expert advice. That's what matters most. 
So we're glad to partner with you on these just to make sure that we're hitting home runs for our clients. And that's gonna to lead to a lot more referrals coming down the road. And the market is shifting. How can you help your clients evaluate their investment portfolio? If people are losing money in the stock market, can't you point them in the, the direction of cash flowing real estate? It's not gonna go away and put money in their pocket every single month. Investors seek out opportunities during a shift. This is a good opportunity for you to make sales. If first time home buyers are out there, hey, they're renting now. You can, uh, you can find rental properties for investors. So can you be a part of your client's advisory team for investments? Absolutely. So add value, not only as a broker, but be a market expert, be an investment expert as well. And you can really add value to them. So that's what we got. And um, I appreciate the update. If there's anybody on the commercial side that wants to add to it, then you're welcome to chime in. Awesome. Thank you, Colin. Anybody? That was good, Colin. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and will you share the slides? Yeah, I, um, I emailed them to everybody during this and I'm gonna put them on our Facebook after the meeting. So oh. everyone should have them in their inbox. Cool, is there anything important that we need to go over with ALC update where our timing is way off? We, we will have info to people about Red Day. That's important. Okay, high five, I'm moving on. Okay. <laughs> Um, 210 is, is done here. Are we supposed to go over them ourselves or? No, I'm here. Hi, Don. Hello. How's everybody doing? Good. Thanks for giving me 45 seconds to talk because I know we're way behind um, your schedule, but that was some awesome information this morning. And um, thank you for letting me eavesdrop on that. Uh, so we had an amazing March. I just really want to say thank you so much, even in the face of all these challenges and opportunities. And you're taking 210 with you, and I appreciate that. So, um, you know, 29 close, closings in March, that's almost, um, well, not quite double what we did last March, but but it's a huge increase. And I, I genuinely, oh, there's the cutie. I love you, kids. It's great. Um, if you want to go to the next um, slide, I'm not going to read everybody's names, but just thank you so much. Um, and let me know. I'm working from home, so any, to, any way that I can be of value to you or service to you, please let me know. Um, you know, your clients are super important to you. You're doing everything to foster um, your relationship with them, and, and that's what we do uh, from this side as well. So when, whenever you uh, refer me a client, I promise to take care of them the same way that you do. Um, next slide is just a couple quick reminders. How can I be of service? You know, listing coverage is great right now. Your homeowners are using their appliances more than ever. So um, if you've got a listing, put listing coverage on there. That way, if they um, have a failure, they're protected. Um, if you just have questions about how to use BombBomb, Bomb, it's something I use in my business. I'm more than happy to help you. Um, Agent Portal, or if you just want to talk to an adult human, um, I'm here. I appreciate the opportunity to, to serve you and to be valuable to your business. Um, next slide is just my cheat slide. It is my children. I just want to say, you know, this is this is my big why. I know y'all have whys that you get up and get dressed every morning. And um, even as we're working around these new things, um, I'm still working just as hard for you. And I know that you're out there working hard. So any way that I can support your business, please let me know. Awesome. Thank you, Don. Thank you. All right. Pivot, shift ahead, daily live stream. Uh, you guys hitting that at all? Anybody watching those? Yes. Yeah, they're they're good. So it's it's worth yeah. going on and uh, watching those. There's been some good takeaways. I need to apologize in advance because the high D in me has taken over. And all right, have you guys seen this? This is a so this is our uh, snapshot for the week. We just got a new format done for this, and Alex will be sending it out on a weekly basis. That'll have clickable links. So you'll be able to see what's coming up for the week and what you should hit or what you can hit to benefit your business. But pay attention to those emails. If you're not getting them, let us know. It's probably because you had unsubscribed before and we can try and get a different email address in for you. But I, I would appreciate if you guys logged in and took advantage of some of the resources. Managing expenses, stop spending money. I'm skipping that. See what I'm doing here? All right, upcoming events. We got Mindset with Molly on Thursday at 4 p.m. Um, don't forget our pizza drive. Movement Mortgage has uh, partnered with us and they're sponsoring our pizza drive. 
come by and get your pizzas. Anything they need to know, Alex? Um, just swing by the office tomorrow between five to six, and we will be there with your pizzas. So thank you guys, and thank you to Movement. I really, yeah. we really, we're looking, really, so. really looking forward to seeing the not your smile, but the top half of your faces. So. <laughs> Uh, please do register for that, or if you, I mean, if you have already registered for that, we'll see you there. Uh, and then we got the next 90 days of movement mortgage, which is Wednesday at two. All right, bold pivot, we already talked about. Do it. And I don't know what this is. What does that say? Free one-on-one -on -one coaching, new mastery clients. Uh, so this is sign up in April, get free coaching through May. And current mastery clients are 50% off through the months of uh, April and May. Red Day. We're still going to do Red Day. What we're going to do is come together with the Culture Committee and we're going to talk about uh, ways that we can pivot on Red Day and create a huge value for the community in a different way. So probably won't be a physical experience, but we'll figure out, that sounded funny, but we'll figure out how to uh, get together to create a huge benefit for the people around us. So don't skip it. It's more important now than ever. Uh, okay, listen to the podcast. All right, so awards, and we'll do these quickly. Written volume for the group, uh, Broker Asheville, golf clap, please. Team, price team. And that's for written volume. We don't, let's see, usually we have prices on here, and this feels odd. Uh, written volume for individual, John Haynes, crushing it. Uh, also, John it has been featured on a ton of uh, editorials. So if you are interested in uh, retreat properties, uh, log on to his website. He's always writing and blogging and there's some really good stuff. Uh, close group, Matt and Molly team. Whoop, whoop. Congratulations on Matt and Molly team. Looks like the armor team on close volume. Congratulations, armors. Uh, close volume individual, the man, the myth, the legend, Strepa Sky. Congratulations. Uh, listing volume, Broker Asheville. Good job, Dave and gang. Uh, listing volume for the team, Front Porch Realty. Awesome. And individual listing volume. Congratulations, Taylor. Taylor's a newer agent. That's awesome to see. Uh, top commercial agent, Carla. Good job, Carla. Uh, also on listing volume. Congratulations, Carla. And look through the month, Amy Shuford, 900,000. Woo! Uh, Amy's been doing great, so definitely say congrats to her. Look at that, Maria Atkins cat. Congratulations. Rob and Kathy cat. Amy Walker cat. Do they still get mugs, Kit or Alex? What's the deal with the mugs? Do they still get them? Yeah, yes, they, they do, but we, I mean, not yet, but <laughs> they will. Trust us. Uh, Armor team, congratulations on capping as well. Libby Rogers, congrats. And Emily Welsh, congrats. And the desire to do more comes from a place that's bigger than ourselves. Anything is possible. True, true, Gary. All right, I know today ran over. And uh, I apologize for it running over, but I, I wanted to make sure that Mark had time to share because he usually brings it and I think he, he done brought it. So I appreciate everybody uh, participating in that. We love and miss everybody. And please let us know if there are resources or things we can do to contribute to your businesses or your lives personally. Uh, we miss everybody. And I look forward to uh, catching back up in two weeks. Thanks for being so patient. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, Thanks, everybody. Thank you.